If you are an 80 kilogram man standing 10 meters away from the One World Trade Center, then there should be an expected horizontal gravity of 0.05606 meters per second squared. What? Right, let's get this rolled on the show. Shut up and sit down, you big ball f Please subscribe. The so-called law of gravity is a monumental hoax and constitutes one of the biggest psyops in all of history. I know, it's nuts, isn't it? To declare a fundamental law of the universe as a hoax because you can't feel a force that's completely overwhelmed by the friction from your own shoes is almost adorable in its profound scientific illiteracy. Almost. Assuming we actually live on the spinning globe Earth promoted by modern Freemasonic science. Oh. Freemasonic science? Now is that different from regular science or are you only calling it Freemasonic science because it is regular science and you can't make it work on a flat earth? Consider the following calculations and contradictions. Okay, I'll do exactly that then, but considering the fact that your first calculation was itself a contradiction, I'm not that worried. The supposed law of gravity claims its mysterious action at a distance force can be measured as g times m1 times m2 over r squared, with g being equivalent to 6.674 times 10 to the power of minus 11. Now, consider the One World Trade Center in New York, which has a mass of approximately 1 trillion 50 million kilograms. This means that if you are an 80 kilogram man standing 10 meters away from the One World Trade Center, then there should be an expected horizontal gravity of 0.05606 meters per second squared. Right, first off, let's just gently point out that Eric's calculation, much like his grasp of reality, is a tad off. Now a quick run through Newton's actual law of gravitation for those exact numbers gives you an acceleration closer to 0.7 meters per second squared. So he's already messed up his own evidence by a factor of over 10. Not a great start when you're trying to debunk reality, is it? But... <laughs> Even if we humor his initial incorrect number, or even my corrected one, the answer to why I don't feel it is gloriously and ridiculously simple. Friction. Seriously, the static friction between your shoes and the pavement, or even the slight incline of the ground, or the gentle breeze from a passing pigeon, is orders of magnitude stronger than the gravitational tug from a distant building. <laughs> Tug. I... And this building, even with the corrected higher number, is pulling you horizontally with less than one meter per second squared. That's like complaining that you can't feel an ant tickling your arm while there's a rottweiler gnawing on your leg. Considering the standard rate of vertical gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, this means the expected horizontal gravity from the One World Trade Center should be pulling at about 1 174th that of standard vertical gravity. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where Eric Douche Nozzle's House of Cards really starts to wobble. He's basing his new supposed contradiction on his old incorrect calculation. 174th, my word. He's trying to make a big deal out of a force that's barely over half a percent of what's actually pulling you down. Even if his original, wildly inaccurate number of 0.056 was somehow correct, it's still less than 1% of the force you do feel every second. So I fail to see exactly what it is you're trying to prove. If it's that you don't know what you're talking about, then well done. But if it's anything else, well, also well done. Because we get to laugh at you. <laughs> Because you're complaining that a force which is in reality about 7% of Earth's gravity, or if you use his incorrect number, less than 1%, isn't immediately obvious is to your senses. Obvious is? I don't know what happened then. That's like asking why you can't hear a whisper over a jet engine and then concluding that sound doesn't exist. Absolute nonsense. This may not sound significant, but it must be measurable. And this point becomes extremely interesting when the same 80 kilogram man stands just one meter from the One World Trade Center.
Why does he keep showing B-roll footage of a man playing with a slinky? Everyone loves a slinky, you gotta get a slinky, 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 go, slinky, go! Anyway, if you could somehow magically stand just one metre from the centre of mass of the One World Trade Centre, which would mean you'd be somewhere deep inside the concrete foundations, or perhaps even lower, maybe playing hide and seek with the subway lines, the gravitational force would indeed be incredibly significant. And plug in those numbers into Newton's actual law, an 80 kilogram man would experience a staggering force of over 5,600 Newtons, leading to an acceleration of more than 70 meters per second squared. That's right. 70 meters per second squared. That's about seven times the acceleration you'd feel pulling you downwards to the entire Earth if you were in a vacuum on a perfectly frictionless surface, one meter from the center of mass of that building. You wouldn't just be interested, pal. You'd be smeared across the nearest wall faster than you could say flat earth logic. Oh yeah, you did make your calculations from the center of the object whose mass you were trying to calculate, didn't you? So, we've seen a lot of mind-bending logic in this video so far, and I've got a question for you. If gravity did actually work the way that Eric Dubay seems to think it does, what everyday object would you be afraid to touch? Let me know in the comments below and keep it clean. <laughs> oh, don't. <laughs> in this instance, the questionable law of gravity calculates that the horizontal gravity increases 100 fold to a whopping 5.606 meters per second squared, which is more than half of standard vertical gravity. More than half of standard vertical gravity? Uh, no mate, it's not more than half, it's nearly seven times standard gravity. This isn't just more than half, it's literally enough force to flatten you against the side of a building if you were actually one meter from its center of mass. So your whopping number is just a joke and an understatement of the actual force. And it's based on bad maths anyway. The gravitational attraction between an 80 kilogram man standing one meter from the World Trade Center should be easily felt and should require significant effort to resist being pulled into the wall like a magnet. Okay. But here's the inconvenient truth for all flat earthers, which keeps derailing their entire fantasy physics lessons. You're not in a frictionless vacuum, and you cannot stand one meter from the center of mass of a skyscraper. I thought you were a smart guy, Eric, and I don't have the time or the crayons to explain it to you. But if you stand on the actual ground a meter from the outer surface of the World Trade Center, then nothing's gonna happen. And claiming gravity is fake because you're not magnetically attracted to a distant building is like claiming the wind doesn't exist because you can't push over a brick wall with your breath. I bet Eric Dubé's family tree is a cactus. <laughs> Finally, if the same man were to be so unfortunate as to touch the Trade Center, the bogus law of gravity says that you will need to call the fire brigade to come and detach the man because he will no longer be able to break free by his own strength. No, you'd more likely need a paint scraper and a mop and bucket, you clown. Now let's just be absolutely crystal clear here. This just doesn't happen. You can walk up to and touch and walk away from any building on earth without requiring an emergency rescue team, a forklift, or a detachment of firefighters armed with crowbars. Why? Because the gravitational attraction between our bodies and the surface of a building, which, remember, is still hundreds of meters away from its actual center of mass, is so incredibly, ludicrously, insultingly tiny that it's completely meaningless. And trying to use it as a gotcha moment for the shape of the Earth just illustrates how clueless flat earthers are, even the ones who can fake sounding smart, like Eric Dubay. Consider the same 80 kilogram man now on a vacation to Switzerland, where he goes to rock climb the famous north face of the Eiger Mountain. Here, the mystical law of gravity predicts that even if he loses his grip while climbing, there is no need to fear, 
because it's impossible for him to fall from the 10 billion ton mountain. That's how I imagine flat earthers react when they watch this douche nozzle. They worship him. He's a clown. And this isn't a bogus law of gravity saying it, mate. This is your imagination saying it. Trying to create a dramatic scenario to prove your point. When you're climbing a mountain, the overwhelming force pulling you is the entire planet Earth's gravity. And it's pulling you straight down towards its center. So that's a force of roughly 9.8 meters per second squared acting on every single bit of that man's 80 kilos. That's why things fall, because the planet is massive. So do you have any more delusions to share with us or are you done? Since the distance between himself and the mountain is almost zero, making R squared in the equation nearly negligible. I mean, you could have just said no, but fine, carry on if you want to. According to the magical law of gravity, we are assured that rock climbing massive mountains like these is actually among the safest of pursuits imaginable, because falling is deemed physically impossible. Why is it that when flat earthers think they're debunking something, all they're actually doing is creating a problem which doesn't exist? It's completely pathetic. When two objects physically touch each other, the gravitational force between them increases to a very large number, implying that they should become difficult to separate. In reality, however, only magnets behave this way. Well, I'm glad you've compared gravity to magnetism because that perfectly illustrates just how much of a moron you actually are. Magnets, when compared to gravity, are billions and billions and billions of times stronger. Freemasonic science apologists attempting to refute the necessity of non-vertical gravity will often assert the Star Trek argument of Gravity only comes from the center of the Earth, Captain. It's not a Star Trek argument, is it, you dickweed? It's a reality argument. Gravity pulls things towards the center of mass of a given object. But this is a nonsensical double standard, because the same broken law of gravity claims this calculable mutual attraction exists between all objects, even between two particles, and not solely from the center. So your entire argument then, Eric, is that because things don't get stuck together due to gravity, gravity is a hoax. Really? You haven't forgotten that you're an adult man, have you? And as such, you should have got past this sort of childlike way of thinking 30 years ago. Grow up. Google AI clarifies, quote, Gravitational attraction emanates from the entire mass of an object, not just from its center of mass. Wait, so do you think that we think, you know, the people who aren't moronic enough to be flat earthers believe that mass isn't really part of gravity, that it's just the center of that mass? What the hell are you talking about? So the excuse of claiming gravity only comes from the center of the Earth globe is an unevidenced backpedaling double standard. Then isn't it lucky that nobody believes that? It's the entire mass of Earth that attracts things towards its center. That's just how gravity works. And the only reason that you and other flat earthers constantly try to debunk one of the fundamental forces of the universe is because you all know that it is completely impossible to be able to apply gravity to a flat earth. Yeah, I think that's enough Eric Dubé for anybody for one day. Thank you all so much for watching. Quick apology, this video should have been out yesterday and last night's upload, which was Sunday's show, should have been uploaded tonight. But I've been having technical issues and I'm getting very frustrated and I'm now going to go and cry a little bit and be sad. Love you. Bye. <laughs> out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. So, there's no joke today. I wanted to play you a new song I'd written. It's called Subtraction. So, take it away. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever 